Scoob, do you realize where we are? No. Look around, man. The clean, modern aesthetic, the cool blue color palette. We're in Ikea. the Falcon Fury. Did you say Ikea? Nope, I said Falcon Fury, just like you. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Lucky Dog Podcast. This is your host, Elias Roush. This podcast is sponsored by EliasRoushMedia.com, photo, video, digital media production. Today, we are discussing Scoob, the 2020 family animated film i guess uh straight to vod because because of covid we all know that we can't go to the movie theaters in most states uh for the time being so it's all vod um you know for better or for worse this movie went straight to dvd scoob obviously about the Hanna barbera uh classic animation from warner brothers is uh about Scooby-Doo, the mystery gang, the franchise, it's quote-unquote back. Even though it's never really been gone, it's back again on the big screen. Everyone um, f- over a certain age would probably remember the uh, the more memorable live-action, um, or you know maybe not-so-memorable live-action interpretations of Scooby-Doo. Some people liked them more than others. Um, I, you know, had my gripes with them, but uh, overall, I really am a, I'm a fan of Scooby-Doo, but I'm not like a in-depth, detailed fan about it. So I'm picking up moderate Easter eggs when watching watching this film. So with saying that, is uh, Scoob, the 2020 American uh, animated mystery comedy film, is it for you know adults? Is it for kids? Is it for families? Who is it for? Well, I think that's kind of one of the problems with the film. Um, just kind of starting off real quick. Uh, I think this movie is strictly for kids. And not that that's a bad thing. And not that every movie has to be a Pixar animated uh, Oscar winning feature. I don't think it has to be that. But with saying that, I felt like the the cons of this movie really outweighed the pros which makes it much more of a one-time viewing for most family films i don't think it's one that you're going to say oh that's a classic it's not going to be your way your one is it's going to be to revisit every time this is strictly a trojan horse of an animated movie to introduce the hanna barbera characters i'm talking like uh their classics is like uh this is sort of uh, touching on the characters that may or may not be within the uh, the trailer. So I'm just going to say the right off the bat. Uh, you got like the Blue Falcon, the Captain Caveman. You got the, the some of the people from the Wacky Races. And if you've seen uh, the trailers, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but this really is uh, a movie that is supposed to introduce all of those older characters from, you know, the 60s, 70s, and 80s um, into the the new 2020 generation and with doing that they are just taking a lot of the old uh branded material and quote-unquote revamping it for today's generation so there are going to be people that uh, are going to enjoy the scoob movie i'm not going to um (laughs) i'm not here to say why are you enjoying something you know that's obviously not what i want to do i'm just strictly saying this is what i noticed from the movie I might be slightly a little bit more harsher on it just because, you know, some people say, oh, movie reviewers are a little bit more harsher because, you know, the, uh, the we see more movies than the average population. Therefore, we're comparing it to more, uh, you know, more more pieces of media that we have seen. And so what I with saying that this is bits and pieces of all the different types of family animation that I've seen over the course of the, you know, 2010s, it's uh got bits of the minions it's got bits of uh even sonic the hedgehog that came out it's got uh uh many elements that you've seen in other animation um movies but overall i will say i didn't hate the look i i I did kind of like the look it is a little bit more uh stylish in a way that might look straight to vod um Double Toaster kind of talked about it, why the animation doesn't look um, up to movie quality. So with saying all that, yes, it's a family film. This is only a family film. In my opinion, it's strictly for kids. However, they have Easter eggs and they have 
references that are modern day contemporary references that don't exactly match with anything that they're talking about. In my opinion, the direction and writing in this is next to God awful. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't think that much was, uh, there was no direction in it and there was no, uh, you know, through line and conclusion with the story. It's, this is the, uh, the writers are Matt Lieberman, Adam Zeitzel, Matt Lieberman's from the, uh, the Christmas Chronicles and playing with fire, the Adams family animation, Dr. Doolittle, the straight to DVD movie. Adam Zeitzkels from Rampage, Maid of Honor, Due Date. And so you can kind of get a feel for where these uh, stories are actually coming from. There's actually a couple people on this. Deep Blue Sea uh, writer, Eyal Podell. Um, just like, who are, who, I'm, I'm, no offense to any of these people, but I've never seen such an amalgamation of writing come to this. They are like, we need all of these guys to come in and write the Scoob movie. Like, where is the freaking direction? Like, the direction from Tony Cervone on this, um, the, the, he's a producer on uh, an ass ton of Tom and Jerry, Looney Tunes, all of these old animations, a lot of them straight to DVD is what it is. He's a producer on all of them, and he's a director on a handful of them as well. Um, but he he does none of these people are showing that they have they are able to take on a property such as Scoob. Now I don't think you always need to show that you have uh, you know the biggest and best resume, but I didn't think anything they said in this really resonated with saying, yes, this is, these are the people we need to make the Hanna-Barbera universe. This is exactly what they're trying to do. and It's create a Hanna-Barbera universe. It's bringing all these random amalgamation of characters, this half-assed storyline that we've seen a hundred times, and these uh, contrived tropes that are just so obvious. It's like... Oh, it's it, they're they're not they're not funny. I don't know what. I don't know what they were really thinking. They they're almost like jokes that would be funny to maybe like a fifteen or sixteen year old, but none of this movie would ever gear toward that. So it, I was very confused about who this was really for, except for uh, very small and young children. And so they do have a a pretty interesting cast of people that are on here. You got Will Forte taking over Matt. Lillard's job as uh, uh, Shaggy Rogers, a lot of people are going to have a problem with this. I I might be one of those people, but I don't wanna really want to go off on th that being with the biggest problem in Scoob. I don't know why you wouldn't bring Matthew Lillard back, um, the original Shaggy voice for the past 20 years since the uh, since uh, the live action uh, universe. Um, you got Jason Isaacs as uh, Dick Dastardly, Mark Wahlberg as Blue Falcon, Gina Rodriguez as Velma, um, Zac Efron as uh, Fred, you got Amanda, Amanda Seyfried as Daphne, and uh, Ken Jung as uh, Dino Mutt, and uh, Frank Welker coming back as Scooby-Doo. We've seen Frank Welker, uh, or we've heard Frank Welker play Scooby-Doo um, in all of the Scooby Doo's, and so um, it, it's great to have a, a pretty okay cast voice voice casting. I think I think some of them hit a lot better than others. Now I, I can't exactly um, go into too much detail with out I guess explaining things. I, I really can't explain, but I, in some scenarios, I felt like the voices just didn't match what was you know what I was looking at, and so. With uh, saying all that, I know I feel like I'm kind of bashing Scoob a lot, but I mean this is a big property. Why would you put? Why would you put people behind the wheel that don't really know what they're doing, or that 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 have not shown to be able to, you know, carry a property further than this? I I'm I'm kind of bewildered by the direction in it, to be honest. Um. So yes, with saying all that, this is. Sh it's strictly seeming that it's going to appease young children. It's it's 
put it on for your uh, four year old and their friends, you know, um, that that's what this movie, unfortunately, is, which I felt like it could have been a little bit more. I felt like the 70s Scooby Doo's had a little bit of an edge to them. And I don't need them to have like uh, adult jokes every couple minutes to keep me engaged. I just need to have some sort of writing that makes some sort of sense. The writing in this, the plot alone, Scooby and the gang face their most challenging mystery ever, I'm sure. A plot to unleash the ghost dog Siberius upon the world. As they race to the, do the dog apocalypse, the gang discovers that Scooby has an epic destiny greater than anyone imagined. And ultimately, what the fuck? Like, um... The this makes the movie, the the live action movies, in my opinion, look pretty good to half decent in comparison. I'm I'm just like wow they they did not know what they were doing with this property in comparison to the uh, you know in comparison to the older twenty minute uh, animations in comparison to something like uh, Scooby on Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. It just has a narrative through line, a plot. There's not these random cameos from uh, people that haven't had anything to do with pop culture in the past 20 years. What the fuck is... Uh, I'm, I'm going to start spoiling shit. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. That th This is where it is. It's for kids, and that's only for kids. That's what I got to say. Um, why the... F this is spoilers territory now. Why is fucking Simon Cowell in this? This does not make any fucking sense. I don't... Does anyone remember this guy from anything other than American Idol? I, I think there are tropes about the Scooby-Doo movie, you know, such as uh, Scooby not being able to talk to anybody except for Shaggy because of, you know, Shaggy's supposed to be, you know, baked all the time so he can talk to his dog. I think that is still kind of incorporated in this, but it's not exactly to that degree. Um, there, there's like this overall through line of the mystery gang wanting to kind of become more, you know, corporate and more uh, brand themselves as a mystery gang. And we do get to see them kind of grow into that as, you know, in three separate scenes of them, uh, you know, be starting to become the mystery gang and starting really young. Um, and I thought, you know, it feels like, you know, Scooby and Shaggy are kind of coming of age. They're supposed to be, you know, got to get a job, got to, got to get this. But this movie is so distracted and so consumed with, wanting Scooby and Shaggy to be in this almost superhero-esque Marvel-style universe that they are just trying to shove all of these characters in all of these contrived ways. I mean, Tracy Morgan comes in as Captain Caveman, one of the better voice actors in this, in my opinion, but it's still... Um, it's still contrived in the way they're brought in. There's just so much random shit that happens throughout this. It's like Dick Dastardly's trying, you know, the antagonist is trying to get Scooby so he can unlock a portal so that he can get his old pal Muttley back. And in doing so, there's all these crazy shenanigans that ensue and they run into all these wacky characters such as Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt and their, you know, their personalities are switched from their animation parts. You know, Dino used to be kind of a stereotypical, you know, uh, you know, almost like mentally retarded. It, it, like it, it was bad and it was really bad. Um, and now Blue Falcon is unfortunately kind of like the dazed and confused one. And it's actually Blue Falcon's son. So it's, you know, a little bit further down the road. But regardless, I felt like none of this was geared toward making a good movie. And you know, just how fast and how flexy and how, how ridiculous things are happening and how manic things seem to be happening feel like, uh, you know, the worst aspects of like the, the Minions movies. I'm, I I haven't actually seen all the Minions movies uh, in full at all, but I've seen just parts of just how they're acting and these little robot things that Dick Dastardly has just evoke that to, to a T. Um, I don't know. I just felt like the contemporary... Uh, like, oh, oh, okay. So let me let me, let me rewind just a little bit and say, uh, Double Toasted has a, a a really fascinating breakdown of why this movie does not work. Um, and so I will just kind of do that little plug, but with saying that Martin on that show did say, 
you know, when is this supposed to take you know place? Because in the flashback of starting out, Shaggy is a young kid, and the Shaggy looks like a seventy year old young, or, or sorry, a, a thirty year old young kid. Uh, I don't understand why he looks like that, and they f they do the whole solo shit with the with Scooby Doo's naming, like he doesn't know what his names are, his name is, so he names him after some snacks, like oh my god, um, he's in in the uh the line is like oh well you know a cop is trying to catch Scooby because Scooby's trying to eat uh you know some food on the market or something, and he runs into Shaggy and he's like. What's this dog's name? He's like, it's, uh, 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 Scooby, Dooby, Doo? Like a question mark? Like, like looking at a box of snacks trying to convince a cop that this is his dog. He's like, the cop's like, well, you know, I can't get a dog that has a middle name. It's like, what? This is the kind of movie that we're watching? Like, this is such a low bar to hit on that. I, I, it, it makes me want to go back and watch any other Scooby-Doo movie just to wash it out so that I can remember what a good Scooby-Doo movie is. Because I felt like there are actual stakes. I remember, like, uh, like the Hex Girls and, and going to, like, these different places where it was... It was always teetering this line of did the mystery gang was always trying to you know discover what was going on and with saying that you know did were they able to discover it was it someone behind a mask oh crazy Doctor Jenkins again or Mister Jenkins um, versus was it an actual ghost and I always felt like there was this kind of level of like ooh is it is it real is it not real and you had the interesting characters that were really pushing that idea so. Um, with, with everything that happens in this, it doesn't feel like there's any stakes. I mean, maybe at the very end, it's a little bit moving, uh, on like a very moderate level of maybe not seeing your friend again, but it's just like, I, I really never felt it in a way that all the other Scoobies had made me feel. Now I haven't seen those in 20 plus years. So maybe I go back and be like, oh yeah, those suck too. But at this point, I'm pretty sure Zombie Island and even the live action movies are better at this point. So, um, yeah, it, it's kind of a ridiculous movie. I don't really want to go into too much detail because it's it, it is a a kids film. Um, uh, yeah, I don't have too much to say. I actually didn't hate the animation like a lot of people did, or thought it was just too clean. The Easter eggs, uh, they're fun, but. Even for me, I haven't seen half these characters in, in 20 years, and so I don't exactly remember everybody. Um, fourth wall breaking, uh, a little bit talking about the the older age writers that were on this, you know, writing uh, Shaggy and Scooby and the Mystery Gang in the 70s. It's a little bit funny. I think I chuckled and smiled like once or twice, but I just thought this movie was so dull. Um, the, one of the jokes is I, uh, Fred says, I thought Tinder was an app that delivers firewood. I, I, there's there's like five or six lines that literally made me cringe in my seat. I was like, oh, who wrote that? Like, who's who, who wrote that and who thought that was funny? They're not even like dad jokes. They're just like somewhere between like, it's like an, it is an adult writing for like, uh, I don't know. A tween or something like that. I don't know. Like even a tween would barely know what that stuff is. I don't. I, I don't know. I. I gotta get out of here. Thank you for listening, watching Scoob Review. Check out all the other Lucky Dog Podcast reviews for uh, the Lucky Dog Podcast, SoundCloud, Facebook, Instagram, streaming on Twitch. We release everything early on YouTube, and then we release it in podcast form on SoundCloud. All you can get the SoundCloud stuff on all your favorite podcast providers. Um, check out Apple iTunes, uh, Google Play. I believe we're on Overcast. We're on TuneIn. We're on. You can even get us on your Echo. Just look up Lucky Dog Podcast. You already know. Thank you for listening. Uh, donations, PayPal.me slash the Lucky Dog Podcast. Let me know what else we should review. Let me know how you like this review. And... Zoink, Scoop! God, that was... Uh, that was such a hard... I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to work on my fucking... Bye. Take it easy. If you want, we'll, we'll pull over and drop us off here. We'll walk home. I guess our new movie is an origin story. Every hero should have one. I want The Rock to play me. Never gonna happen. <laughs>